Salut everyone. At the end of this video, you will know if Elementary OS is for you or not. Because uh, yes, I tested it uh, with you guys live on my stream and uh, well, it didn't go as expected. So I, I, I really think you need to watch this video. Let's get into it. As always, let's start with a little bit of context. The first point I want to mention is that this is the first time ever I did try Elementary OS. And this distro is kind of like one of those distros which are like super, super polished, or at least like define themselves as is. And I would say like most of the work, and, and I will talk about it later in the video, is really focused on the overall like ergonomic, you know, UI, like sensation you will have uh, using this distro. So what is under the hood uh, when you, you, you look into it, it's actually based on Ubuntu Noble 2404. So this is really what is under the distro. But on top of it, you have a really nice desktop environment called Pantheon. So I hope I'm pronouncing this well. But this is the overall idea. And the way like the developer of this distro presents themselves is that this distro is known as a thoughtful, capable, and ethical replacement for Windows and Mac OS. Yeah. Just that. And before we jump into the actual like uh, review and, and the good towards the distro, I want to mention another thing. So because this is the first time I tried it, I won't be able to cover what type of evolution they got, you know, between the previous release and this one. So that's the first point. Uh, the second point is related to the fact that when I did the stream, I had a lot, lot, lot of comments toward the political view of the dev or the political view of the, the, the vision of the distro. And, and I get confused. So I want to make sure that you guys are aligned with my way of working here. I don't care about politics. I just care about one thing is like, how is the distribution running on my PC? And when I say running on my PC, I'm saying like not through any type of like VM, right? Like no virtual machine. We are doing the install on hard on my 5950X and my uh, NVIDIA 1490. And we test the distro. We test the distro for the basic stuff. We, we check uh, a, a lot of things. And if you want to get into all the detail, like I make a three hour live stream or maybe four hour live stream. I'm going to put the link in the description below of me and you like actually going through the installation, the test and everything. So whatever I'm going to say after this point and whatever I've been saying for all the other distro around has nothing to do with politics. I couldn't care less about this. My review is about the end product on my PC and indirectly on your PC. I'm doing this for you guys not to have to do it in certain case. And I think you're going to thank me at the end of this video. Let's word it this way. So as always, we're going to start with a good point uh, toward this uh, distribution. The first thing I want to say is that the installation process, in my opinion, is really nice. I think uh, the way the UI has been set up is really clear, straight to the point. Even if I had a lot of disk, like SSD and NVMe, like hard drive, like on my PC, Everything was super clear. I was not lost. It was super clear to the point. I believe that they kind of like make it like super easy for the newcomer. And this, I have to mention it, it has been great. So that was the first point. The second point is related to the overall look. So this is really subjective. Uh, I, I personally don't like it, but I can see the work and the effort from the dev toward like the way this desktop environment is set up. Like it looks like Mac OS. There is a lot of detail and a lot of like time and energy spent for making this desktop environment look like it is. And I have to say again, this is a great job if you are a fan of it. I'm just talking about the look there because we're going to talk about what is behind a little bit, but, but we're going to do that after. The other good point, the third one, is the App Store. So the App Store, even if I'm not um, really fan of the UI of this App Store, what I can say is like the dev have been putting some work to really control 
what type of application are going to go through the store itself. So I believe there is some type of like curation because when you go through it, it's kind of exhaustive, but it's not like all of them. And they also provide paid application. And this one is a little bit tricky. Let me get into it. There is some type of program related to the distro that gives the opportunity to all the dev out there to have a, a paid option through the App Store of Elementary OS. So let me be clear. This paid option, you can switch from paid to non-paid. So you, you can use it for free. You don't have to pay, but there is still an option there for the dev to, you know, just be there and have like a specific spot within the App Store. And the way it works right now as I'm recording this video is like, 70% of the money recollected through this process will go to the dev itself and 30% will go to elementary OS, you know, to pushing the specific app and uh, the specific price for the usage of this app. So just to make it super clear, the third party developer can be part of the paid version of the app. It's an option. It's not a requirement. So if they, are, if they don't agree with a 70, 30 uh, cut because they think it's too expensive or whatever, uh, they don't have to be there. But it's still an option for them to be there if they agree with this cut. And I think it's a good option, right? Like, uh, uh, you know, nobody is obliged. And if they want to be there and they think it could help, you know, remunerate their work, I think it's good. Now, from my personal standpoint, I think the 30 percent cut is a little bit on the high stand. But if this is the price to pay and they believe like it's worth it, you know, 70% of something is still better than 100% of nothing. Think about it. Now, from a user standpoint, I think it's a little bit tricky because if you don't really click on the application, you will, you might think that the application itself is only available through paying, but it's not the case. It's just optional. There is a price there. If you click on the application, you go through it, you can switch from the paid version on the non-paid version. Uh, one thing I noticed though, is that the paid version is on the repo of elementary. And if it's the free version, it will go on the repo of flat hub. So this one was like kind of a bit tricky, but I think I need to mention it. Uh, you will do whatever you want with this information. And now because I talk about flat pack, I, I will uh, mention this point number four, which is like through my uh, in-depth experience there, I noticed that most of the applications you will install from the App Store are going to be through Flatpak. I would say like 100% of them. So if you like Flatpak, this distro is definitely your dream. It, it's a Flatpak-centric distro. Everything navigates around Flatpak. And I will talk about it after because obviously it comes with like some positive related to Flatpak, but also some negative. And the last point I want to mention here is the fact that the NVIDIA driver were installed right off the bat. So because it's based on Ubuntu Noble, you only have the production driver from NVIDIA, the 550. So, you know, whether you like it or not, uh, that, that's the one they are pushing. But for a basic usage, I really appreciate the fact that they are installed like properly and working out of the box. I think this is one of the best integration of the NVIDIA driver I've seen. Uh, you have a little app, you can choose whether you want the open or the closed version of them. You are just limited by the repo itself. Uh, I did some tests and added uh, the PPA of the NVIDIA beta driver, which give me access to the 560 version of the driver, which are not really the beta, but well, anyways, they were there. And uh, I, I have to say uh, that was, I was pretty neat. So I need to mention it. Now let's talk about the bad. I think we covered all the good points there, but the bad, you will see the list is going to be a little bit longer. So the first point I want to mention is like overall, even before going to the gaming or content creation part, I want to say that the overall feeling on the desktop doesn't feel right. Some of the applications they choose as their like default application, like the browser, which is a GNOME browser, it doesn't feel right. It's like all buggy. There is some research on the App Store, which will like literally make freeze your PC when you type uh, the name in the search of the App Store. It, it just feel like laggy, buggy, like it doesn't feel like the work is finished. So yeah, it look good if you like it, but it, it just, I don't know, there is, uh, you know, an unfinished like feeling you have 
uh, when you use the distro and it and it's really annoying it's really annoying to have like this like, kind of like freeze in the middle of nowhere when you don't expect them it's it just sucks so i have to mention them to you it's not related to my hardware it's not related to any of this because i don't encounter that on any other distro it just feels like it's 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 not done something is wrong the other bug i noticed too was related to the notification there is this little like notification pop-up at the top right of your desktop that will like just pop up when there is a new update and this thing will just pop up pop up pop up after each reboot telling me i have more update to do and when i click on it there is no update to do when i go through the manual update through the terminal still no update i'm like come on so it's really annoying again it feels like it's it's it is not done like maybe they push the release too early or something but it doesn't feel right now the flat pack i mentioned earlier that the flat pack they come with their you know good point containerization uh uh easy of install no dependency issue etc etc we know all the benefit of flat pack but there is also a big downside and especially in this distro i don't know how the app center actually install the different application via flat pack but there is a problem the problem is super simple like it's, it's super simple when you install an application via the app center it does not install the dependency by itself so this is the situation we are in you download uh, for example obs studio which which i've done and then you realize that flatpak did not install the dependency for obs studio to work and i'm thinking about the nvidia driver for me to take advantage of invenc for example and i was like wow what did i do something wrong or anything and then i had to go through the terminal to actually update Flatpak to make sure the dependency were there. So was it an issue, you know, of behavior on my hand? Uh, should I should have waited for the little like pop out telling me there is an update to, to click on it and have no update again. I was in this cycle where I was like, oh, so something is wrong. And my only way to fix it was to just go through the terminal and find a way to do it. And I believe like, from a user coming from Mac OS or even Windows, like those guys are going to be totally lost because they won't make the link between the fact that by just downloading through the App Store, you don't have all the dependency and now they have a half broken application which doesn't have all the dependency to work. Like it's just... So this was the part which was covering the, the content creation part, like OBS obviously would work, but it's going to be the flat pack version and you're going to have to, you know, work a little bit more to have everything installed. The other part I want to talk is about gaming. So gaming, you don't have the option. You have to install the flat pack version of Steam, which is not the best recommendation out there. Uh, the dev version will be better, but meh. anyways, you install it and then you will notice that the performance is here, but it's still subpar compared to, you know, any gaming distro out there. The kernel is relatively old. It's a LTS kernel 6.8 at the time of recording this, this video. And the drivers are not the latest, latest. So are you going to get the best experience? No, but some of the, the tests I made, I was like around like 10 to 15% under. Uh, what I would get, for example, with uh, Cache OS. Now, the last point, and I think this one is, is a pretty big one. One of the features they are mentioning for the change note for this release of elementary OS 8.0 is the fact that now Pantheon supports Wayland. And uh, on paper, it does support Wayland. The thing is like you can't uh, log into Wayland. So first I thought it was a driver issue. So I did install like the latest driver, edit the PPA, making sure that everything was up to date. And by the way, like the PPA download like was one of the longest downloads I ever had. Anyways, it was kind of a pain. And when I finally did it, I tried to log into Wayland again and it was broken again. So their Wayland session, which they call like secure session, is broken. You will get a black screen. So I think again, it's a did release a product in my opinion which is not finished and it's kind of sucks because obviously like i'm going to talk about the product when it's released maybe they're going to fix it like six months from now or maybe they won't right so this is where we are at uh 
with this distro. The last negative I want to mention is related to the upgrade. If you move from one version to another version of elementary OS, you won't be able to upgrade. Even if it's something that you can do on Ubuntu, which is the, the base of this distro, where it looks like you can do it in elementary OS. So just to be clear, if you are running elementary OS 7 right now, and you want to upgrade to the 8th version, you can't. You have to make a backup, erase everything, and start from scratch on the elementary OS 8. And I'm guessing if you start to daily drive this one, when the 9.0 is going to be released, you won't be able to upgrade. And I think it's the type of information you want to be aware of uh, before you switch towards uh, this baby. All right, guys, so how do we conclude this one? Listen, I'm going to be straight to the point. I have nothing against the developer of Elementary OS. I think they, they are trying to do what they can to reach the vision of the distro. And the vision of the distro is kind of like a, a, a really like polish UI, a really polish installation with a, a really centric flat pack distro, uh, which will be like, I guess, like more secure in the future. And I would say like maybe more stable because nothing depends uh, you know, toward like the, their repository is going to be really like oriented towards a flat pack. So I'm like, you know, maybe there is something uh, that could be done in the future. But right now, as as I'm, I'm recording this video, this is not it. This is not it, guys. So if, even if you are not gaming, even if you are not like, you know, do, doing any type of like content creation, like, I would not recommend this distro, guys. I think it's in the state right now, uh, which is which is not great. It's not great. So, you know, maybe if you really love Pantheon uh, desktop environment, maybe, which, which I get because it's, it's looking really nice and you can see there is a lot of effort in it. But outside of that, I, I, I don't see it. I, I just don't see it. So I, I don't like to be rough like that because I believe like there is a lot of dev out there who put a lot of time in this distro. But is, is there is so many better options out there which might certainly not look as good as this one, but they're going to be way more functional. And at the end of the day, I, I, I believe this is what is really important, right? Like you want a machine, you want an experience you want an operating system that just like answer like fast, that, that just work out of the box. You, you don't want too much. So yeah, that's, that's the feeling I have. So, so I really hope they're going to be able to polish and iron out everything for the next release. But as it is right now, it, it kind of feels like it's, it's just, you know, not, not finished at all. Like it's just a, a beta version of what it could be or what it should be. So anyways, that's all I have to say. I, I hate doing that, but but I have to share my experience there and it was not the best. So hope they're going to do better in the future. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. Uh, I, I want to, again, like thanks all uh, the financial supporters of the channel. You guys are the best. We are going to be uh, live Friday and Wednesday for a lot of new content to come so don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh yeah give a thumbs up to this video because i'm pretty sure that if you were into this operating system i might have been able to save you uh some time and some headache <laughs> anyways have a great rest of your day and as we say bisous bisous